my 286 build, I was using an Arduino Mega as a debugger, basically reading in all the address lines, the data lines, the control lines, and bringing that in through an Arduino Mega and then sending that data to my PC. My PC, then I had a Windows application that would show me or decode that information and show me something that was readable and useful. Challenge with the 386DX though is I have double the address bits, double the data bits, likely have more control lines that I'm going to want to pay attention to, and there just simply are not enough inputs on an Arduino Mega. So I introduce you to my 386DX debugger here that supports 144 inputs for debugging. Uh, and pretty basic card here, and really what it is is an Arduino Mega that I will place into pin headers up here. And then I have pin headers down here to connect in. This is 96 inputs right down here alone. So I'll have 32 inputs for my address, 32 for data, and another 32 for control lines or whatever miscellaneous. Plus I have another 32 up here and another 16 analog inputs if I want to use those. Now how I'm accomplishing this is with a whole series of shift registers. And on my 286 I was doing this with three shift registers. I was using all of the pins plus three shift registers, so I was completely loading up every single input on the Mega. But with this, I'm basically just going to put in a dozen shift registers to start, or up to a dozen if I fully populate it. And then I will read all of those in using just these bottom pins here on this Arduino Mega. And I'll leave all of these other ones free for other things, or to get me up to 144 inputs if I actually need that many. So the concept here is pretty simple. I have my Arduino debugger and I'm going to have three control signals that I'm going to generate from the Arduino that really manage the shifting. So it's a shift clock and just tells it when to load up the information from these pins and then how to shift them, when to shift them out through this QH pin. And for every one of these ICs down here, these are all shift registers. There's 74, 165 shift registers you'll see that they are all identical as far as the control of them. They're reading different inputs coming from those bottom pin headers on the PCB, but then they're outputting through a different line to get up to the Arduino Mega. So all I need is these three signals, and then I can shift in on these 12 lines data from these 12 shift registers and each shift register can connect me to eight signals. So 12 times eight is my 96. So I've got 96 inputs down here, plus the double row or double column pins up here, which would be another 32, plus my analogs, which is another 16. That gets me to my 144. And I also have these three pins to pull in three different clocks. I could have probably just used a single pin and let me connect in whichever clock, but just in case I want to be looking at multiple clocks as I'm doing my debugging, I can bring in, for example, clock, clock two, and P clock on three separate pins and use all three of those you know, for whatever purpose. So nothing too crazy on the design here. It's just a series of shift registers helping me to pull this in. Now, as far as code is concerned, the code is pretty simple. Now, this would have been code from my 286 monitor. And basically, at that point, I had three shift registers. And one of them was on a certain pin, another pin, and another pin, as far as where it was bringing in data. So I had a most significant byte, least significant byte. I was bringing in a word of data for that. And then I had another eight bits, or another byte of data for miscellaneous control signals in addition to all the other pins I had already used. But basically this just is a loop. And so I come into this and every time my 386 clock ticks, whichever clock I'm going to time all of this off of, let's just say it's uh, clock two, uh, this loop has to run. And this loop has to run eight times. And within this loop, then I'm going to cycle the serial shift in, the shift clock basically which means that the shifting is happening at eight times the speed of my 386, whatever clock I decide to use when debugging. Um, so that means that this will definitely be bottlenecked. I won't be able to run my 386DX at full speed, but maybe I can run it at 50 hertz, 100 hertz, maybe a kilohertz, something like that. So this is for low speed debugging. 
but I can read in every time my processor clock, the let's say clock two runs or hits, I can then have a line in here that reads in 12 different, you know, from the 12 different signals coming from those shift registers. And then I'll flip to the next bit, read all 12, next bit, read all 12. Now in this example for my 286, I was reading uh, 16 bits in here and eight bits here. So every time this loop would run, this was a bit and another bit and another bit. So I'd read the three shift registers. I'd cycle a bit, read the next bit, cycle, read, etc. Now instead of three though, I'm going to have 12 that I can read in. And so I'll be curious to see at what speed the Arduino just simply can't keep up. Uh, again, the Arduino shifting has to happen at eight times my whatever bus or speed I'm going to run for my processor. Plus within each of those clocks, I'm going to actually do 12 different reads. Uh, so it'll be a bottleneck, but uh, this here with the three shift registers was running fine up to a pretty good speed. So uh, I'm not super worried about it, at least for low speed debugging. But that is an interesting little card that hopefully will let me do some debugging on the 386 or other future projects, of course, where I need more than the number of inputs that a typical Arduino would have available on, on the Arduino Mega. This just gives me a lot of flexibility for that. And I definitely don't need to populate all of these shift registers if I'm not going to use that many inputs. But I do know I need 32 address lines, 32 data lines, and at least probably another dozen lines for miscellaneous control. So I probably will use most of what's here. And I have a whole batch of these uh, these ICs here, so that's not a concern. And they're inexpensive, these 74165s. So I'll give that a shot. But you might see this in use later when I try to start debugging my 386DX.